blood that sets us free. given access to know the name that is above all names. 
the name that represents perfect love a perfect love that casts out all fear say all fear we know the name that casts out all fear and that name is Jesus as I invite the prayer team to come down to the front if you're facing something in your life or you want to stand in proxy for someone else something that stirs a little bit of anxiety inside you possibly even some fear because you don't know what's going to happen next there's uncertainty there's taking that step and not knowing what to do next stand in the place of faith with these prayer team partners and believe God believe God to cast out that fear I invite you to come and pray with these amen
inside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me yes. hallelujah father we thank you so much today for your great love in our lives we are really a grateful people father says thanks for your love for your mercy for your grace for your saving grace in our lives lord for reconciliation for redemption god we had so many things wrong with our lives and you came and in your great mercy you reached out and loved us you saved us we're really grateful for that today. Father, I pray now as we enter in to receive the word this morning, this word that's foundational for us as believers, no matter where we are on our journey, no matter where we are on the path of life that we're on today, whether we just got saved last week or 40, 50 years ago, Father, today your word is foundational for who we are, for where we're going, for what we're going to be for whether or not we're going to finish the race that was set before us. We're going to run the race of faith. We're going to cross over the finish line. We're going to hear well done. Help us today. Lord, we open up our hearts, our minds to receive your word. I pray for a fresh anointing upon my lips. Lord, as I speak your word, thank you for strength today in my body that's weak and tired. And yet, Father, it's the anointing in me. It's the anointing in your word that sets captives free. And so I thank you today for that. I declare your blessing over this word and over all that hear it. Those that are here, those that are watching online, give you thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a big amen, amen. God bless you. Why don't you greet someone there beside you before you're seated? Say hi to someone, especially if they're new to our house. Welcome them. All right, thank you very much. If you can find your seat and encourage you to finish up your greeting at the end of service today. Thank you so much. Three things real quick before I get in the word this morning. First of all, just want to encourage and remind you that we have corporate prayer twice a week, every week with the whole body. Tuesday mornings at 615, invite you to come and be a part of that. We made a decision at the beginning of this year that we were going to pray first and pray often. And uh, we're praying and asking the Lord to do the things that he's already dropped in our hearts to ask him for. So I encourage you to come out and be a part of that. Sunday mornings, 845. We also have a prayer time here that's really wonderful. Wonderful. Encourage you to find a time to make one of those meetings. Some of you just listen to every single week and smile, but uh, I'm speaking to you today. Okay, you smile all you want, but uh, some of you never, ever, ever come to corporate prayer. And I want to encourage you. You know why? Because Jesus said his house was a house of prayer. If you never show up for a house of prayer, then, you know, I encourage you. You're missing out. I just encourage you to come, be challenged, encouraged by the body that gathers. Uh, there's something powerful about corporate prayer. Something that will change your life. I encourage you to be a part of that. Secondly, we're starting a new growth track today. It's just started a few minutes ago. We had some new people in our house at first service, and they stayed over, had breakfast, and started. And uh, I encourage you that uh, if you have not yet taken growth track, that you sign up. There's another one that will start. What month are we in right now? April, May, May. We're June. The next one will start the first weekend of June and encourage you to sign up and be a part of that. In Growth Track, we help you to uh, know God, find out who he is, that he's just not uh, some big, bad, mean, angry God up there that's waiting to knock you into hell every time you mess up, but he is a father in your life. He loves you before you were. He chose you before you ever chose him. And uh, we, we want to help you to know God in a very personal way. And, and in knowing God, the second thing that happens is you begin to find freedom in your life. And uh, freedom's a wonderful thing, especially if you've been bound up. And, and uh, we want you to discover your purpose. And then fourthly, we want to help you to get a desire to make a difference in your life, with your life. And only Jesus Christ can do that. So I encourage you, if you have not yet taken Growth Track, that you do. And lastly, we want to graduate you from Growth Track to get you into Connect Group. Because we believe everybody needs somebody. 
Five of you agree to that, but that's okay. I believe it, and that's all that matters for me. I have three connect groups that I'm a part of, and uh, three different groups of men. And, and uh, last week, I was meeting with group three, which are, I'm the baby of that group. That's pretty cool because the other groups, I'm the daddy in the group, but uh, I think I'm the youngest in that group. Uh, maybe not. Maybe Steve Shaft's a few months younger. But anyhow, uh, I, I learn as much as I receive. Uh, it, I mean, I, I receive in that group as much as I give out, learn, and, and been challenged by some of the older guys in our house. And I really encourage you to... Uh, find a place, find a group. We have all kinds of different groups. And if we don't have the perfect group for you, it's because you are now here to start the perfect group that you're supposed to lead uh, so others can get involved in that. So we want to encourage you to do that. All right, we want to jump into the Word this morning and uh, share something. Uh, over the last several weeks as we were preparing for Easter, I really began to set my heart uh, to bring some uh, form of this word that I'm going to teach this morning, and I'm really going to kind of preach, teach. Today's message is really foundational for our Christian walk, really no matter where you are on the journey of life. You know, we've had a lot of people uh, respond to Christ. We had two more in the first service this morning, so we've had about 125 people respond to Jesus Christ, and oftentimes when you hear a word that I'm going to preach this morning, you'll sit there and go, hey, man, that's for the new people, but the reality of it is Holy Spirit has shown me that no matter where we are on our journey, we need to continually come back to that place to make sure that we have a firm foundation that we're living on. And there's only one thing that produces a firm foundation, and today I'm going to give you that. So I'm going to preach a little, but I'm going to teach a lot. I'm going to share a whole lot of scriptures this morning. And uh, because it's the Word of God, in the Word of God, that we find life and the grace and the strength to walk in Him. And Jesus said amen to that right there. All right. Uh, I want to begin with this. John 15. Father, once again, anoint your Word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. John 15, verse 4 and 7. I'm going to share this. Yesterday I was flying home. I had to fly out Tuesday. Uh, I had an emergency phone call, and, and um, one of my precious relatives is uh, at a very young age is dying of ovarian cancer, 48 years old. And I flew out to Arizona to be with her and her husband, my nephew. And um, so as I, I went out there and I uh, had a lot of time alone in my hotel room uh, during times when we were giving them a break from being with them and uh, was meditating on this word and I had all these other scriptures and, and then yesterday when I got on the plane to begin to fly home, uh, I felt like Holy Spirit dropped this word and said this, this is the foundation to get to, to the foundation and that is found in John 15. Let me read it to you. Jesus is speaking here in your Bibles. It's written in the red. This is Jesus declaring and this is what he said. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If, if you abide in me, if you abide in me. He said, if you abide in me, if is a huge word. It's two letters, but it's a huge word because everybody that goes to church doesn't abide in Christ. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Most believers have not a clue what that really means. They think it's a, a pipe dream, a hope and a prayer that, that maybe the Lord will answer some prayer that you have. But that's not what he said. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, uh, you can ask. And, uh, and then in verse 4 again, he said, abide in me and I in you. See, he didn't come saying, uh, I'm going to come abide in you so that you can abide in me. He already he made the way through his death, burial, and resurrection, but he declares, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I, God's chosen you, Jesus has chosen you, and Holy Spirit has chosen you, but whether you choose back, well, that's your choice. And he said, if you abide in me, then I'm going to abide in you. Christ is going to come and abide in that place that's been prepared in your heart by you, inviting him to come and take up residence in your life. So before we can ever get to this word, which I want to declare, matter of fact, I titled this new heart, new mind, new heart, 
new mind. See, before you can have a, a new mind, you gotta, you gotta first of all open up your heart and say, Jesus, I need you as Lord and Savior of my life. I can't save myself. I'm a horrible God. I've already tried all that and none of it works. So I'm choosing you. Jesus said, I'm the way to the Father, the only way to the Father. And if you come abide in me, if you receive from me, then you get all that the Father has because I'm the door to the Father and the Holy Spirit comes to enable you to, to walk out all those things that you're desiring because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Christ in you that changes you from the inside out. So many people, I grew up in a very legalistic holiness church. And so in my church, a lot of people would come and they would try to get right with God before they actually got to church. So that they would say things like, well, well, when I'm ready to stop drinking and smoking and dipping and chewing and going with girls that do, then I'm going to come and get right with God. But, but the reality is you can't do any of those things. You can do it by the flesh. But it's not going to change you. You can stop a lot of stuff and never be right with God. Yeah. Matter of fact, my pastor who, who died last year at 89 years of age, my pastor grew up in a Methodist church. And until he was 25 years old, he was probably one of the best people uh, that had ever walked on the earth. He, just, he was just obedient to his parents. He, he, was, uh, he never smoked. He never drank. He, he never ran wild. He, just, he had never been with a woman before. He, he, just was, he was so good that he couldn't get saved. It really became a distraction in his life because he just thought, well, well I haven't killed anybody, you know, I, I obey my parents. But, but the reality is until Jesus comes into your heart, no matter how good you are, your goodness is nothing. So we receive Christ in the fullness of all of his glory. He comes in and he changes our life. And in doing so, he enables us to begin to walk out the fullness. So today I want to talk about your heart. And I want to talk about our mind and how we get the two lined up together because many people will come just like over this last year, uh, 125 people have responded to Christ. Are all of them walking with God? I don't know. I'm not their Holy Spirit. Are, are all of them pursuing after God? I don't know. The reality is I hope they all do. I hope that at some point every single person who's responded and cried out and prayed a prayer will also begin to do as Paul said. You got to start walking out your salvation. It's not good enough to go to church, raise your hand, respond, pray a prayer, and then go back home and live the life you want. That's not, that's not walking out as a believer. The reality is, is that anytime anyone comes under the teaching of God's word, there's something powerful about the preaching of God's word. It doesn't matter who's preaching it. There's an anointing on the word, and the word will affect anyone that's even remotely sensitive to the things of God. They come under the presence of God. They get convicted. I don't know about you, but if, if I've done something this week and messed up my life and I haven't made it right, and the minute I come in the presence of God, I can't even start worshiping God until I go, okay, I got to get this thing right. I had a really bad attitude the other day, or, or I did this, or I did that. But Holy Spirit's the one who prompted that in you. But, but boy, there's something powerful about once you say, God, that's not who I want to be. I, I, I despise that, that it comes out of me at times. Will you forgive me? Just like that, you're forgiven. Cleansed and healed. Now, all of a sudden, you can lift up holy hands before God and begin to worship him because there's a freedom that comes in Christ Jesus when you have been cleansed and redeemed. But the problem is with too many believers, too many people that say, well, I believe. A lot of people say, I believe. Can I tell you, even the devil himself believes? Satan believes. And the word says he trembles. Problem is, a lot of us, we believe and we don't tremble. No fear of God. You know why? Because we have no word of God in us. We tried to live for God out of our emotions. I've told you all my story, and, and many of you have similar stories. You, you tried to live for God out of your emotions. You go to church, you get stirred, you get emotionally stirred. You cry, man, you, you do all kinds of things. If we were still running to the altars, you'd be running to an altar because your emotions are all stirred up. But the reality is you can't live for God out of your emotions. I know, I tried. I tried hard to live for God with no word in me. Problem is, you can make it almost through Sunday afternoon from Sunday morning. I mean, there, there's just not a lot of, uh, of strength or power in your life when you're trying to live for God out of your emotions. Your emotions let you down every time. But all of a sudden, when you get the Word of God in you, which is why the enemy of your soul fights you so hard to keep you out of the Word of God. That's why I stand up here week after week after week and challenge you, get in the Word. 
You got to pray every day. Pray first. Learn to pray first. When you don't pray first and you mess up your life, then you come back and say, God, I'm sorry. Man, I needed your wisdom there. I didn't pray. Tried to do it on my own. Made a $40 million mistake. And uh, now I need you to redeem it. Isn't that how we come to God? Man, I, hey, God, I'm going to give you a break today. I got today. I got this. All the decisions today, don't even worry about God. You know, just help somebody else. I got today. How many of you know <laughs> you're on a path of destruction? You're going to mess up because you ain't got nothing, honey. Nothing outside of the wisdom that, that comes from the grace of God. So when we learn to pray first, and, and now we start praying because we got some word in us, and we don't just start praying out of our hoping and our wishing. Now we're praying out of the word of God. We literally, this year, you know, we wrote a book. We, we, we uh, published a book for you, gave everybody in the house a book, pray first, so that, that you can begin to take the book, open up. It's full of scripture, nothing but scripture. You open up the book, you begin to pray scripture. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's something really powerful about praying scripture that goes beyond you praying out of your emotions. But you see, because what you're doing when you pray scripture is you're lining up with God's word. You're not just coming with, well, I hope this and well, I want this or I desire. No, no. What does God say? Can a nation be saved in a day? Can a city be reached in a week? God says it can. When we get in the word, all of a sudden we get begin to be stirred in our spirit and our heart to believe God for something bigger yeah. than Lord, just help me, my wife, our two, us four, no more. We just care about us. Right. But all of a sudden, when you get in the word, all of a sudden you start caring about everybody. Yeah. You care about everybody. Yeah. My wife, she just, she's learned to just roll with me, laugh with me because I have no strangers in my life. I love traveling for one reason. I love divine appointments. Yesterday, I had four divine appointments in 16 hours of trying to get home from Arizona to Gainesville. Look, you're already miserable. You're already flying, sitting in airports for 16 hours. You might as well do something with your life, right? And so you start thinking, God, who can I touch today? I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm trying to get home so I can preach tomorrow. And, and uh, I, I'd like at least something good to come out of this. And you know what? If you, you start praying that, you start having a hunger to touch someone's life, guess what? God's going to bring someone into your life. God's going to bring someone right smack dab in the middle, and you're going to have an opportunity to touch. On Tuesday afternoon, I got the, Tuesday morning, I got the phone call. Amazing Dolly helped me get some flights out of here by Tuesday afternoon, set at the Gainesville Airport for seven hours. Uh, one flight got canceled, another flight got delayed. I'm leaving the airport, swing by Delta, ask this young man. He's sitting there, looked bored out of his mind, ready to go home. I said, young man, is there any way you can get me to Phoenix, Arizona this afternoon? And he started laughing. And I said, would you at least check? He said, sure, sir, I'll check for you. And he said, he said you, know, you sat there right at the airport, they're just just doing this. And then they do it for a little while longer. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. They're warming up their computers or something. But, but all of a sudden, while he's looking and Dolly's on the phone, I'm on the phone, got Dolly in the ear. And he finally says, sir, either have that lady help you or let me help you. But, but I'm not going to do this together. So D D Dolly's saying something and he's saying something different. He's like, there, there are no seats. And then all of a sudden he goes, wow. He said, a seat just came available. I'm like, I'm here at the airport. Those poor people have been inside of security for two and a half hours. The flight I'm trying to get on had been delayed for almost three hours. They were waiting for me. And uh, somebody got tired of waiting and decided to go ahead and cash in, checked out and left. And all of a sudden there was a seat on the flight to get me to Atlanta. And so we're sitting there and he said, well, look, I can get you all the way to Arizona by about midnight tonight. And, uh, but but I, ain't, there's, I don't have a seat to get you back home. And I said, well, just look one more time. Because I knew it was graduation weekend here in Gainesville. You know, people were coming and going. And so he's just looking, looking. And all of a sudden he goes, wow, where'd that come from? He said, a seat just popped up. I was like, hallelujah. And he just looked up at me. I laughed. I said, man, thank God. And uh, he got me on that. I got to Phoenix about midnight, got to hospice about 1.30 in the morning. And, and uh, I'm walking through this process and I'm going, God, in the midst of all of this, there's got to be somebody's life that I can touch and encourage. Why? Because God cares about every single lost person in the world. I step on the plane in Atlanta, going to Phoenix, nine something at night. And this young man hits on me. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> he says, sir, those are some nice glasses you have. Thank you very much. And, and, and I'm way back in the nosebleed section, you know, and he says, can I help you get to your seat? I said, no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. And in a couple of minutes, he comes back to see if I wanted him to take my jacket. I'm not in first class. I'm way back there in the nosebleed section. And he says, he says, I said, well, sure. Here. So I take off my jacket, give it to him. And then about an hour later into the flight, he comes and wants to know if I would like some snacks or something. So, so I, I'm just getting the royal treatment and, and I don't know why, but in the midst of it, I said, Holy Spirit, you got to help me touch somebody's life. And all of a sudden, the flight attendant sitting right in front of me in the jump seat in the back by the emergency row, she says something, and I share, and all of a sudden, literally for about 30 minutes, we're in this amazing deep conversation about God's goodness. She goes to Passion Church in Atlanta. Her dad pastors a little tiny church. And, and I began to speak a word, didn't realize it till the end of the flight, began to speak a word of encouragement to her to give to her dad. He's about my age. And, and all of a sudden, man, God's just saying, look, you, you, you're sacrificing, you're going out here. I'm going to give you something that's going to give you some, some food for your soul. You know why? Because God loves people. And, and if we're willing to say, Lord, I, I'm full of the word. I've been in your presence. I, I've been praying and seeking your face. God says, let me use that that's in you. Why? Because you see, he said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. Yes. You walk around full of Christ every day because you're full of the word of God. Hear me. You're going to have divine appointments. You're going to have divine opportunities. You're going to be able to touch someone's life because God cares. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants wants, he wants, he desires to use you for his fullness, for his glory. I want to, I want to read you a scripture and I'm going to read you a bunch of old covenant scriptures for a purpose. So hang with me here. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, thank you, Jesus, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. You see, when God gives you a divine appointment, what's he giving you? An opportunity to help someone get reconciled to God. There's no greater thing you can do with your life than to help someone get reconciled to Father God, to, get, to, to, to be introduced to him. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. How many of you are glad God did not hold your trespasses against you? But before you chose him, he already chose you. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that trusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, listen to this, he becomes a new creation his old man passes away, and now you have a right. You have a right as a believer. Everything from here on out begins to become new yeah. in your life. Yeah. Why? Through what? Man, I got the same face, got the same fingerprints, got the same DNA. Yeah, but, but your mind now is being renewed because of a heart condition. You gave your heart to Christ. Now you have the ability to begin to renew your mind. See, you don't give your mind to Christ. You give your heart, your life to Christ. But your mind, you got to take responsibility for. Come on, somebody say amen in here. Your mind is what's going to enable you to begin to get your heart and your mind lined up together. Because what you meditate on, what you eat, what you feed grows. And what you starve dies. That's why so many believers are hurting desperately today. Because they have no life of God in them. Because they have no word in them. I said this last Sunday, I'm not a good enough pastor or preacher to give you everything you need to last you a week. You're coming in here, I, I'm hoping every single week, Holy Spirit has already prepared your heart. Some of you are sitting there, you got your scripture open. You're, you, you've been meditating on a scripture that I bring on Sunday morning. Why? Same Holy Spirit. 
meditating, and God's working in our lives. We're, we're being reminded that, that, that in Christ, we have a purpose, a plan, a future, and a hope. He makes crooked paths straight. Man, he causes doors that, that are slammed shut and double locked to open supernaturally. Why? Because you are his plan for the world. Amen. You're his purpose to touch someone's life. And we got to get our minds right. Our hearts are surrendered. My heart, your heart, we, we gave our hearts to God. Some countries give their kidneys, some give their liver. We give, their, we give our hearts in America and we say, God, I give you my heart. Now Holy Spirit's saying, okay, what about your mind? Because see, if you don't get your mind lined up with, with the word of God, your heart's not going to be able to stay right. Because all hell is against you. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, for this is the covenant now, I'm going to read you some scriptures here, and this, this one out of Hebrews is, is, is recorded, but it's an old covenant word that God had already given to the children of Israel. It's a prophetic word for the day that we're living in. It's what's going to happen when, when we're no longer living under the law, but now we're living under grace, and the thing that God's going to do to us, for us, listen to me, look up here, through his word, which is who? Christ Jesus. That's why John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Why do we need to get in the Word? Because the Word is Christ. When we get in the Word, Christ gets into us, man. We begin to fill our mind, no longer just trying to live for God out of my emotions or out of my, out of my hoping and a wishing and a dreaming, but all of a sudden begin to discipline my life every single day, morning, noon, night, man, throughout the day, meditating on God's Word, getting the Scripture and meditating on that and saying, God, what are you doing in my life that's going to change me and help me because of the Word? So listen to this. For this is a covenant, God says, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law or my word into their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We're the people of God, man. This morning when I was riding in, all of a sudden I started passing some churches, and I just started praying. I started prophesying over every church that I passed and declaring, God, every church that proclaims without shame or embarrassment the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for them today. I bless them today. I pray they see people get saved today. I pray they experience the fullness of your grace, your supernatural Holy Spirit power in their life. God, we need in America a touch from God. We need, we need a stirring and a burning and a fire that comes. And it's not just for one church or one city or one state. Man, God's wanting to reveal himself throughout the whole world. Yes. Proverbs 4, 23, above all else, guard your heart. For everything, look up here, you do flows from it. You see, you, you got to get your heart right before you can get your mind right. Guard your heart, keep the faith, fill your, fill your spirit, your soul, your mind with the word of God on a daily basis. Let that word get in you and begin to stir. And what's, what it's going to do, it, it's going to confirm, it's going to strengthen, it's going to help, it's going to renew everything that your heart wants. Man, when all of a sudden you begin to discipline yourself to say, I desperately need the word of God. You know why there's so many empty chairs in this place today? There's statistics of people who tried to once live for God out of their emotions. And they can't. Right. Discouragement sets in. Condemnation sets in. Guilt sets in. Because there's not one among us that's perfect. The only perfect one's Christ Jesus. Is he's at the right hand of the Father. So all of us today, possibly, before the sun sets today, everyone in this room will probably mess up at least once. Attitude, behavior, some kind of action, anger, upset, watched something, did something, responded some way that is ugly. But the word in us as believers immediately convicts us. And what do we do? Just go, oh, well, maybe I'll do better tomorrow. <laughs> no, man, you want to go, God, forgive me. That's not who I want to be. That's not what I want to be. That's not how I want to act. I hate that. It's a, it's a reaction. I live in a real world, real pain, real sorrow. It seems, like, it seems like for weeks now, every single week, we have some new family come to our church and almost without exception, this morning, first service, a precious couple came up, been in our church three weeks, came up, we chatted with them for a few minutes, talked with them, shared. And then he said, I, I, I want you to know 
I've just been diagnosed with brain cancer. And man, my heart, it just rips. It seems like every day I'm meeting somebody, once again, that's being tormented. I hate cancer. It's it's like my number one hatred that I have left in this world is what the enemy has brought into our world. We live in a fallen nation, fallen world. We need redemption, salvation. One day there'll be no cancer left. We'll be in his glory, in his presence. But until then, guess what? Good people get cancer. Good people hurt. Good people struggle. Good people fail. Good people make bad decisions. Good people commit adultery. Good people end up messed up with messed up lives because sin has overtaken them. And the good news is, is that if you will repent, truly surrender, get on your face before God, whether it's literally or spiritually, man, you come back to that place where you say, God, help, I need you. God forgives you, reconciles you, redeems you, cleanses you. Why? Because he's got a purpose for you to live out in your life. You, so you got to guard your heart. You got to keep the faith. You got to contend. Say contend. You got to contend for your faith. You got to fight. So you don't just get saved and go, oh, finally, I ain't got to do nothing now but make it to heaven. Oh, you are set up. You got to contend. You got to fight. You got to fight. Paul said, Paul said at the end of his life, man, he's walking down the aisle. He's about to lose his head. And he said, I've kept the faith. I've run the race. I finished the course that was set before me. Man, he didn't just get elevated into heaven. He lost his head. And he said, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Because you see, one day, every person that's still sitting in this room will exit this world through the door of death. And as believers, don't have to fear death. But boy, is it not grievous when you're sitting with someone who's lost and has no appetite for God, and they're about to die, and they feel no conviction that they need to get right, that they can even say, I'm at peace? How are you at peace? What do you believe is going to happen? What, what, what is your sense of, of understanding that, that death is not the end? It's the beginning. This, this body goes to the ground. It's over. It's done. Say goodbye. But your spirit is going to hear, well done, or depart from me into everlasting darkness. Someone said to me this week, I was ministering to, and he's living so far outside of God's goodness and salvation. And yet he looked at me in the face and he said, I am happier than I've ever been. And I believe that God loves me and he made me this way. And I'm okay with God. And I hope you can be okay with me being okay. And I said, I love you too much to not contend for you. So whether you like it or not, I'm going to contend for you. I'm going to fight for you because right now you don't even know how lost you are. Oh, no, I'm good with God. How are you good with God? Because sin can never be good with God. Our sin separates us from the goodness of God. Does God love us? He so loved you that before you even committed that sin, he had already made a way of escape for you to get free from that sin. See, he didn't save us so we could go, grace, grace, this is who I am and what I am. No, no, he saved us so we could change. We could renew our mind. We could renew our thought process. We could renew, renew our lifestyle. We could begin to take everything and judge it by the word of God. See, the same God who made us also can remake us through his word. Man, you get saved. Look up here. You get saved. You're the same. You get up from salvation. You you, you, You ask Jesus to come into your life. You pray the prayer. You ask Holy Spirit to fill you. All of that finally said and done. Look here. You still got the same face, same fingerprint, same DNA. But all of a sudden now he says, I want to, I want to help you change from the inside out. I want to help you get the word in your mind, in your thoughts process, so it'll begin to help you to change your life. And all of a sudden, that word begins to work in you. Listen to Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. God's speaking through Ezekiel the prophet. He said, there's going to come a time when I am going to give them, us, a new heart, a new process, 
a new mind so that we can begin to change those things in a heart of flesh. Listen to this, Jeremiah 31, 31 and 33, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. He had already, he had already given them the old covenant. They're walking out the old covenant. How many of you thank God you didn't live in the old covenant? Let me just see your hand. The rest of you don't know what you're, what you're saying because I'm telling you, the law, you could not live by it. There was just too many laws. And he says, behold, the days are coming. They have come now, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. For this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my word, my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Can you say amen to that? We're his. We're his. And now, if we will just learn how to surrender and bring those thoughts captive. I mean, you realize every day you're bombarded in your mind with thoughts. Some of them are bad thoughts, wicked thoughts, evil thoughts. But you don't have to continue to live that way. You bring those things and begin to declare, God, I don't want those things any longer in my life. I begin to speak the word of God. You begin to speak the word. You speak the word over it, and you find out you have the power to denounce something. You know what? There, can I just speak to all the men in the house for a moment? Listen, we men understand what it's like to be a man. Women understand what it's like to be a woman. I do not understand being a woman at all, period, zero. I fail that every time. But I know what it's like to be a man. I know what my battles are. And, and as men, we know, man, there are things that bombard us. We've been saved, loved God, man, been faithful to our wife. And yet the enemy never stops, does he? He never stops, man. He's continually bombarding, continually bringing things. And you cannot fight the fight in the flesh. You got to fight the fight in the spirit. You got to get full of the word of God. When you get full of the word of God, all of a sudden things begin to change in your life. And you begin to know how to battle. You, you begin to know how to fight. Years ago. Years ago, 20 plus years ago, I had an experience that affected, affected my life, changed my life, and helped me to apply some wisdom to my life that I, that, that I didn't even know I needed. Jim Gilbert, who's sitting back here, and I went together on a trip to Russia to minister to a couple, and Jim stayed behind for ministry, and I was coming back home to meet my wife. I left on the trip sick. I stayed on the trip sick. We were in uh, Riga, Latvia uh, in, in, in February. It was freezing cold. I sat in my hotel room, uh, Jim and I ministering to a couple. I was literally had all my clothes on, wrapped in a blanket, and could see my breath. And I went there sick, and I left three days later sick. And, and I got on the plane, and I'm flying back to uh, meet my wife in Atlanta. And I'm flying I'm through Frankfurt, Germany. I have a 12-hour layover, and I'm as sick as can be. And all of a sudden, man, in my weakness, the enemy just brought all hell against me. And all of a sudden, I experienced temptation. That monkey on my shoulder began telling me, man, you've never experienced this before. You could experience something you've never known before. Listen, nobody's going to know. Man, all of a sudden, I'm getting phone calls in my hotel room. I'm getting knocking on my door. I turn on the television. The first four channels I'm flipping through are triple X rated. Something inside of me starts freaking out. I throw the blanket over the television. This was before cell phones. I can't call my wife. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm in the middle and I'm about to be ripped apart because my flesh was just being bombarded with things that men are attracted to. And for me to say, oh, I wasn't even attracted, that'd be a lie from hell. See, my flesh wanted it. My spirit was crying out, no, you don't. God will know. More importantly, you will know. And, and I mean, I, I'm sitting there and I, I'm battling this. I'm getting knocks on my door. I'm getting phone calls going, Mr. Brantley in a broken English b being asked, is there anything you need? Anything at all? Phone call after phone call. Till I finally had to call the operator of the hotel and say, stop allowing any phone calls to my room. And I'm in this battle. And the enemy of my soul is saying, nobody will ever know. Man, you've only known one woman your whole life. Don't you want to know two? Don't you want to know how good you have it with number one by just experiencing number two? I mean, all of this thing. And it scared me. It scared me. It scared me. The, 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 the battle that was raging in my heart, the temptation going, don't you want to experience this? And I would be lying to you if I said that, oh, man, no way. I don't want any of that. No, no. Flesh is flesh. 
And temptation comes because you can be tempted. I wrapped myself up in blankets and crawled in that bed and went to sleep until the uh, time for my flight. I flew home. I, I, I landed in Atlanta, met up with my wife, started crying, told her the whole thing, came home, told the whole thing to my pastors. And since then, this pastor does not travel alone out of the country, ever. Because you know what? Had I had a brother with me at that time or my wife with me, none of that would have happened. And so many people think, oh, I can handle it. No, you know you can't handle it. I tell young men all the time that are, that are young businessmen that have to travel alone, I'm, I say to them, listen, use wisdom. You don't, you don't work all day away from your wife for a few days at a time. Go sit in a sports bar and think for a moment that you're just going to eat a quick meal and go. The enemy will put something that tempts you. Hear me. If it can't tempt you, she won't sit down. But whatever sits down is something that can tempt you. If you don't guard your heart, if you don't renew your mind, if you're not full of the Word of God, all of a sudden you're going to go, you know what? Maybe I'll just try it this one time. This one time can lead to you becoming a spiritual statistic. We got to guard our hearts, we got to renew our mind. You become what you think. And so what you meditate on. See, when I had the word of God in me and I'm meditating on that and I'm in my whole life, I've only known one woman. And I am so grateful today after 40 years of marriage, I can stand here and say, by the grace of God, I still have only known one woman. But boy, how close to destruction I came. See, only God might have known, but I would have known. And knowing me, it would have destroyed my life. It would, I, I would have never been able to look at my wife in the face again. I would have never been able to preach and teach what I did to my sons growing up had I surrendered to that one thing. See, there's one thing in all of our lives that the enemy wants to bring against you. But there's a grace to overcome. You hear me? There's a grace to overcome. I can bring every thought captive. I can renew my mind. I can fight the fight of faith. And I can win because God says we can. Colossians 3, 1 through 5. i got to qu close quickly. If then you have been raised with Christ, if, if, say if again out loud. Yeah. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are what? Are above and not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, all of those are idolatry. And I close with this, Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God. What is good, acceptable, and perfect. Church, what consumes your mind is what will control your life. What consumes your mind is what will ultimately control your life. I want to challenge us as a church, no matter where we are on our journey. Brand new baby in the Lord. Been walking with the Lord 20, 30, 40, 50 years. We have to never think we can do this on our own. And we can never think that we can depend upon just my emotions and my heart to get me through. No, no, you have to, as a believer, get the Word of God in you. Because it's the Word in you that's going to change your life forever. It's the Word in you that's going to work to do that which it was intended to do in your life. Give you power, give you victory, give you the grace to walk in victory. Would you bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment? I want to pray for every believer in this place. Those who are watching online, believers, hear me this morning. Hear me this morning and know that God is challenging us, charging us, stirring us to go the distance, to run the race, to finish the course of life that has been set for us. But to not try to do it on our own, out of our own emotions, but by the Word and by the Spirit. By the Word and by the Spirit. 
So, Father, I pray right now over us, the church, every believer that's sitting in this room, every believer that's watching online, all of our family that's somewhere this weekend, Father, I pray over them, even as they come back and listen to the word online, Father, that every one of us will not look like this word is for our neighbor or our husband or our wife or someone else, but, Father, we're all declaring this word is for me. This word's for us to cause us, to stir us, to challenge us to be full of your word. That in doing so, we have every opportunity as we abide in your word that you will abide in us. Your Holy Spirit will habitate within us, live within us, help us, teach us, comfort us. Tell us the things we have need to know. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in our lives. And I pray, Father, that in each of us, that wherever we are on this journey, some of us need growth track, some of us need to be in a connect group, some of us need personal discipleship today, that we, we need someone to sit down with us on, on a weekly basis for a while and just open up the word and expound on God's word with us. Lord, that each one of us would find that grace and that anointing and that ability to open up our hearts to your word every single day of our life. Just like we don't miss a meal, Father, we will not miss eating at the table of the Lord. Filling our hearts and our minds, fighting and contending for our faith, standing in the gap, believing for all that you're wanting to do and accomplish in us. We are, Father, your children, and we thank you so much for the grace that you bestowed upon us to walk in victory. I declare that over every one of us today. In Jesus' name, would you keep your heads bowed for just a moment, eyes closed, believers, would you pray? I want to speak to those that are watching online. I want to speak to those in this room this morning. I don't know where you are on your journey. I don't know if you have opened up your heart and received the God who already chose you. I don't, I don't know if you've been stiff-arming God, stiff-arming Jesus Christ, but today Jesus is knocking at your heart's door and he's wanting you to open up and choose him. He already chose you, but you have to choose him to walk with him and fellowship with him and become the man or woman that Father God created you to be in this generation. He's done everything he can do for you. Now, you have to do what he can't do. And that's you have to come to this place where you are ready to surrender and say, I need God in my life. I've tried to be my own God. I, I, I'm a miserable God. Can't save myself, can't help myself, can't redeem myself. And you acknowledge today that only God can. He loves you. In just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to lift up your hand and, and just let me recognize it and lead you in a very simple prayer that will be the beginning of your salvation. You will confess Jesus with your mouth, believe in your heart, confess that he is the Christ. And the word says that you have begun your journey of salvation. And then we will help you, teach you, instruct you, encourage you, pray over you so that you can walk out this life that God has for you, life purpose, meaning. He loves you so much. With all that said, this morning, you still have to choose. You can't just think your way into being right with God. You have to choose. You have to acknowledge. You have to confess. So this morning, across this auditorium, believers are praying for you because every one of us were where you are today. That day when we had to choose and we chose God. Today, Jesus is interceding for you. He's wanting you so desperately to choose all that the Father has. He died for you so that you could live. If that's you this morning, would you just lift up your hand and hold it for just a moment so I can recognize it, so that I can lead you in this prayer before God today. Thank you, thank you, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you, yes, thank you. God bless you, yes, thank you. 
husband and wife over here, God bless you. Anyone else? I mean, this is your moment, man. God loves you. He has been contending for you. Jesus contending for you against the works of darkness. This is the day of salvation. Want to join these five or six? This is your moment. Yes, God bless you, sir. This is your moment. Anyone else? Man, this is, this is the opportunity that your life's forever going to be changed, marked by the goodness of God. One last moment before I pray. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. Oh, he loves you. Yes, dear. God bless you as well. <laughs> Father, I thank you so much for loving people and for the response that today their eternity forever changed and marked. Sometimes we struggle so hard, Father, for those that we love and they just, they just will never choose. But I'm so grateful today for these that are saying today, God has contended for me. Holy Spirit, Jesus has contended for me today. I'm surrendering to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Just pray this prayer from your heart this morning. Say this out loud. Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing me in all of my sin, in all my rejection of you. You still love me. You still chose me. Jesus, you still died for me. And I'm thankful. So I invite you, Jesus, come into my heart. I invite you to be my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I surrender today to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I'm choosing you all the days of my life. I'm surrendering to you. Father, thank you for loving me and for loving me first. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a praise for these this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Lift it up. Amen. Wow, that right there is what it's all about. You believers, you came, you were encouraged, you were challenged, you were equipped in your personal walk with God, but at the same time, you got to witness a miracle. Something truly miraculous just happened. God has been relentlessly pursuing these lost souls, and he saved them. He saved them and literally right in front of your eyes, he changed their eternal destiny. So if you responded to the gospel, we want you to know that we're here for you. That we love you and we want to see you grow and fulfill all that God has for you. There's some information on the screen because we desire to partner with you in your journey of faith. So reach out. Let us know who you are. We want to be a part of your walk with God. Amen. Amen. Well, before we go today, we want to make sure to give you guys an opportunity to honor the Lord with your tithe and your offering. So there's a cash offering envelope for you uh, right at your chair if you uh, can use that. You can also make a check payable to The Rock of Gainesville or uh, give online at therockonline.org forward slash give. Why don't you take your tithes and offering in hand and let's declare it blessed. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we declare that all of our financial increase is from you. Father, our, heart, our hearts are overjoyed and full of gratitude for your faithful provision in our lives. Thank you, God, for taking care of us the way that you do. And Lord, right now in this moment, Father, we choose to obey your word and joyfully obey it with the paying of our tithes and the giving of our offerings. 
God, we do this as an act of faith, as an act of obedience, as an act of thanksgiving and worship unto you. Thank you for your faithful provision in our lives. We do this now in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Bless you as you give. Hey, everybody. Pastor Ron here with some great information about our Connect Group ministry. We're coming off a very successful winter semester, and now we're gearing up for our summer semester. So what I want to let you know about is a new leaders meeting on May the 19th. Now, this meeting is going to be for you that may have never led a group, or maybe it's been a while and you want to jump back in there and lead a great group here at The Rock. We'll tell you about our new model and get you really set to be a great leader in our Connect Group ministry. May the 19th in room 214, and it's during the first service. If you're interested, let me know by email and we'll get you signed up and give you more information about that meeting. May the 19th, looking for you. Thanks. Awesome, awesome. May 19th is going to be a big day. In addition to that new Leader Connect Group meeting, um, there's a few other things that we wanted to point out about May 19th. First up, we're hosting water baptisms on Sunday, May 19th, two weeks from today. So if you would like to walk in obedience to the word of the Lord and be baptized and publicly proclaim your faith in Jesus, if you have not yet done so, we invite you to register for water baptism. We're going to have them during both services, during the praise and worship segment. And the rest of us, the church, will celebrate with you as you are obedient in water baptism. So go ahead and register if that applies to you. Also on Sunday, May 19th, um, we're doing something pretty Pretty cool. Strap in your seatbelts. We're finally breaking ground. Come on, somebody. We as a church purchased 160.4 acres, two miles directly north of here, back in 1997. So here we are 22 years later, and we're we're finally about to break ground. It's super exciting. We're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony on Sunday the 19th at 6 p.m. We're going to worship. We're going to pray. We're going to dedicate the land and the building project to the Lord. So we want to invite all of you who are available and want to be a part of that to come out to the church property uh, at 6 p.m., but we need a big favor from you. Uh, Because it is vacant land, we want to make sure that we make appropriate accommodations for all who will be there. So please, if you think you and your family are going to be able to come, please register online. There's more information in the week-to-week bulletin that's also there at your seat. And last but not least, Reach Week is officially open for registrations. So at the same time that we're sending a team of 75 people to Peru for One Nation, One Day to see that nation transformed, we're going to see our city transformed that same week. So we have a lot of serve opportunities, a lot of amazing teams for you to be a part of. So jump online, see which team appeals to you, and register for Reach Week 2019. Aside from that, why don't you go ahead and stand with me. If you're a first-time visitor here at the Rock of Gainesville, it's been such a joy to have you here worshiping with us. Uh, Pastors George and Suzanne will be up front. They would love the opportunity to meet you and say hello. And also, Also, to give you a gift to say thank you for coming. Why don't you high five your neighbor and you guys go and be blessed?